Jim Barron's Rams have had more than their share of key injuries this season, causing them to really struggle. Providence College has one of the better one-two punches in the country with Ryan Gomes and Dwight Growington. But when these two teams get together, you can usually throw out the records. It's the Rumble and Roadie, the Friars, and the Rams, and it's next on ESPN+. Welcome to Providence, Rhode Island, a big city tucked inside the nation's smallest state. And in terms of basketball rivalries, nothing small about the one today. It is the Rhode Island Rams taking on the Providence College Fires from right here at the Dunkin' Donut Center. And hi, everyone. Welcome to Courtside here in the building they call the Dunk. I'm Andy Freed along with Ron Perry. As rivalries go around, there's none bigger than this in this state of Rhode Island. The Rams and the Friars. They love to get after it. They have over the years, and there's a lot of pride on the line, so you can usually throw records out. Should be a good ball game here again this afternoon. Now, when you look ahead of the Big East season, and including this ball game today, Dwight Brewington, Ryan Gomes, they're the tandem for the Providence College Friars to do well if the Friars are going to do well. Now, that's right. Dwight Brewington playing with a lot of confidence for the Friars right now. He's in the starting lineup, shooting the ball very well from the perimeter. He is rangy, he can also drive. He's the second leading scorer behind Gomes on the team this year, and he'll fill it up today. But Gomes, no doubt, is the go-to guy. He's the preseason pick for player of the year in the Big East Conference, can shoot from the outside, and he's very tough to stop in the paint. Look for the Friars to go to him early and often in this one because he poses matchup problems for everyone. They're the one-two scorers, Gomes and Brewington, both had big games in the preseason NIT against the likes of Wake Forest and Michigan. Of course, Gomes returns from last year. Brewington fills the shoes of Sheku Kaba, who, of course, left after the, the past season. Now for the Rams. It's a team ravaged by injuries. No Dewan Robinson, no Jamal Wise. They need Scott Hazelton. He's got to come up big today for the Rams. He is there. Clearly their leader on the floor, leads the team in scoring, can score with his back to the basket. He can fill it up with that medium range jump shot. Also can handle the ball in the open floor. Hazelton needs to come up big for the Rams today to pull off the upset here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Needs to have a big game. He's had a couple of them already this year. Not 23 points against Manhattan. Needs that kind of effort today. And this is a team that's not been scoring much. They got 68 against Boston University in the loss. That's a good output for the Rams of late because they just have not been filling it up in the early season this year. All right, it's the event that everybody in Southern New England seems to have a rooting interest in. The Friars and the Rams. Tip off is coming up. From the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, it's the 115th meeting between these two teams. The University of Rhode Island Rams, the Providence College Friars, and I think they might just blow the roof off this place today. This is a jam-packed, sold-out arena. And as we look at the starting lineup, Scott Hazelton, Marcel Montplaisir, who finds himself in the starting lineup today, J.R. Moore, Parfait Bate, and uh, Sullivan as well, Tyrese Sullivan. This is a lineup that's changed quite a bit for Rhode Island. Meanwhile, Providence is pretty much stuck with the, the same guys. Ryan Gomes, Tuka Koti, Randall Hankey, the freshman out of New York. Donnie McGrath has started every game since coming here, and Dwight Brewington. That's right. I think Jimmy Barron still searching for that right combination for URI. Montplaisir coming off that double-double. Today, he needs a team that will put points on the board. In his fourth year at URI, He's been a rebuilder of programs, and right now, with Dewan Robinson out of the lineup with that foot injury, and Jamal Wise, the knee, trying to hang on this month and get those guys back. And Timmy Walsh, of course, in his seventh year at Providence. His team comes in four and three. They play very well against the big teams, but then that surprising loss with a very poor second half against Winthrop. Yeah, they played very well in the preseason NIT. They won their first few ball games this year. They've got a good squad. They let up against Winthrop. They should come out fired up today. Randall Hankey wins the tip into the backcourt. Donnie McGrath runs the point for the Friars. And there's Gomes' his first touch of the day. Underneath, Hankey misses the shot. He made the open move. Got to get that one down. Fronting by URI out of the man-to-man. -man. And the freshman just couldn't put the finishing touches on that nice inbound, so that nice entry pass. Ty Sullivan runs the point for the... Rams driving is Hazelton. Little scoot pass around Gomes intended for Montplaisir, but he let him too far. 
Friars open up man to man, and Tuka Koti draws that tough assignment against Scott Hazelton. All the matchups between these two teams, Rhode Island has won two in a row. They haven't won three in a row in 50 years, so they're trying to do that today. Friars lead this series. I tell you, these teams have gotten after it over 100 times, so a lot of history here, a lot of, uh, lot of pride on the line in Rhode Island today. McGrath finds himself open, top of the key, and missed it. Gomes can't follow. Cote in traffic, 2 0 Friars. Well, if you think of keys today, Rhode Island, pretty good rebounding team. They've got to keep Providence off those offensive boards and limit the Friars to one shot each time down the floor and then execute themselves in their offensive end. Gomes went for the steal. Montplaisir leans it up from 16. The rebound to the freshman, Hankey. Nice job by Hankey. So we'll keep an eye on the battle of the boards today. So far, Providence looking good. Brewington not shy at all. High low pass to Hankey, and it's 4 nothing Providence. Oh, that was a sweet move. We talked about Dwight Brewington playing with a lot of confidence. That was a sweet penetration in dish to the big freshman. And he shoots it up quite a bit throughout the game. Good for him to get up and then still find the open man. Well, you'll find next time the defense might be more honest and not come rushing at you and the shot will be open. Marley's here with the slam dunk, 4-2. to two. Nice answer by URI to come back, not only to come back with a score, but an emphatic one with the slam. And that just shows what kind of emotion this game is going to have. As he was slamming that down, you could see some of his teammates pumping their fists. They know they're in it today, too. Yeah, that definitely gets the guys going when you get an emphatic dunk. And Keith Dakoti has been, and he's a very consistent veteran ball player for Tim Walsh's club. Like the job he does, and he always seems to pick up a tough defensive assignment. Today again, it's Scott Hazelton. Coach, he doesn't get headlines, but a guy that just every night seems to do things to help the Friars and their performance. He's the kind of guy you refer to as kind of that lunch pail guy underneath. Works hard on the boards, not afraid to dive after the loose balls. Shot clock down to 10. Driving is Bitte. And knocked onto the floor, he'll shoot two. Well, the Friars have, you can see it here, every matchup, they've got better size. They're just they're longer, they're taller. But if you penetrate, good things happen. Right there, Brewington did it for the Friars with a great dish to the freshman, Randall Hankey. And at the other end, the Rams answered Montplaisir with that dunk inside. Both teams going right at each other early in this one. Parfait Bate. The freshman from Cameroon in Africa shoots to 60% in the early go. And ups that at 6 to 3. Neither team shooting all that well for the free throw line early on this season. Both under 65%. And Bate, 2 for 2. It's a two point game. Job by Bate. He had 14 in the last game against the Boston University Terriers. Earning the start, making the free throw. A little pressure by the Rams. Three quarter court. And up and in is Randall Hankey off the pass from McGrath. And that's what you want to do against pressure. Pass the basketball, get it to the middle and then the side, and then try to score, which the Friars did right there. Providence broke that pressure with the pass, seemingly with at least relative ease. Hazelton, fall away. No, and the tip won't go, and a follow won't go, but going to the line will be J.R. Moore. Hankey picks up the personal. Actually, Brewington picks up the personal. That is his first. J.R. Moore out of Worcester Academy with that man, Dwight Brewington. Both have that fun institution. Some big frontline guys for Jim Barron's club. You've got J.R. at 6'8". Big, strong kid. The Fries also have got to box out in this game, not allow second chances for the Rams. Jim Barron talking it over with Ty Sullivan is point guard. Ty had 15 in the first game this year against Brown. He had only eight points all of last year as Moore makes that second free throw. So guys are stepping up. The Rams are a team that's gotten out of sync offensively until their last game against Boston U. So we'll see how they come out today. And in the early going, three and a half minutes, eight to five Friars. This is a great matchup right there. Hazelton trying to put the clamps on Ryan Gomes. I don't think anyone really puts the clamps on him because at the end of every game, Seems like Ryan has a way of putting the numbers up. Every night, it seems like you look up, he's got a double-double by the end. And on certain nights, it's like, when did that happen? Yeah, the thing, that's right. The thing that's nice about the way he does it is he takes it out of the flow of the game, doesn't force it. He's a great free-throw shoot. He draws a lot of fouls as well. 
Hazleton on him hard, and Montplaisir picks up the foul as well on Coty. You can see the attention that Gomes draws, too, when he gets the basketball. Yeah, I love that bounce pass there by Gomes. Used his left hand on the left side of the court. Bounce pass, tough to steal. And the Rams pull out the steal anyway. Ahead to Montplaisir, too hard. Hazelton under the basket. Can't get it to go. <laughs> Sullivan oh, comes out of the pack with it anyway. 5'8", <laughs> he got the offensive board on that long rebound. He had the right idea in the break. He just let his man Montplaisir too much. Nice pass underneath, blocked as Moore had it. Montplaisir in traffic again. He's got it blocked by Hankey. It'll stay to Rhode Island with a shot clock at 15. And that'll bring us to our first official's timeout. A little more than four minutes gone by here at the Dunkin' Donut Center. Three-point lead for Providence. Just getting started on this interstate rivalry, the Rhode Island Rams, Providence College Friars, home team. I guess it's hard to say which one is exactly the home team, <laughs> but we know that guy is the crowd favorite, Ryan Gomes, who has limited touches, but look at what he's about to do this year. Unbelievable. Look at the company he's in, huh? Jimmy Walker, Eric Murdoch, and there's Ryan Gomes, number nine all-time, has a chance. Only those two guys, Jimmy Walker and Murdoch, have gone over 2,000, chance to become the all-time leading scorer here at Providence. He's a little more than 450 points to do that this year. Certainly a possibility. Absolutely. You look at the last couple of years he's had, if he keeps playing the way he is, he will end up being in the number one spot. Sullivan, partially blocked, I believe. And Rhode Island gets a fresh 35. Remember, they had just 15 to shoot out of that timeout. Yeah, McGrath at 6'4". I mean, he's got eight inches on Ty Sullivan, but he's very quick, Sullivan. Hazelton with Cote on him. Vite misses it. And another offensive rebound. He gets his own miss. Long shots generate long rebounds. Everyone has to be committed to box out at the defensive end. That ball will spring way out there. Guards have to do their jobs as well. Hazelton on Cote. Got it. Bingo. That was pretty good defense there by Cote, but Hazelton right now feeling it. He's he's had some injuries with his feet the last couple of years. The transfer for from the University of Connecticut. He knows his team is counting on him here today. You can sense his knowledge of the responsibility he has today. Dwight Brewington from three fouled and he will shoot three. Dwight Brewington. For the first time we saw Brewington, the first shot he ever took as a collegiate player, he made a three-pointer. Here's that move by Hazelton again. Yeah, Hazelton with that, just that quick first step's all he needed. He's tall, he's long at 6'8". Gets that quick shake right there, bang, and lets it go just before Cote can get a hand up in his face. That last foul was Montplaisir away from the ball. Away from the ball, thank you. Ryan Gomes, three-pointer, 11-7 Providence. <laughs> Well, we showed that before the game. Gomes can score from the inside as well as the perimeter. And he's looking for his three this year as well. That's his 12th three on the season. Sullivan tries to answer, can't do it. And another offensive rebound for the Rams. They're doing a nice job off the glass. And that's where they can stay in the game. And a nice job. They're also working some clock if something quick doesn't show up. Down the lane goes Sullivan. Still can't connect. Again, he made the move but couldn't finish. Wide open. I think he was so open. Couldn't believe it. McGrath to Gomes. Hankey's been active and is fouled. And he will shoot too. J.R. Moore picks it up. Well, Hankey's been very involved in the Providence office offense early with some passes. But Ty Sullivan last time. Great penetrating drive, but you got to put the finishing touch on it. I don't think he could believe how wide open he was. <laughs> you do see that from time to time. He's been doing a nice job this year. He's primarily been shooting the three offensively. He made five of them against Brown. He had a three, three-point made field goal game against Seton Hall. So look for him from the perimeter. But that was a great penetration that time. Randall Hanke has started all eight of the games of his freshman year. Hits one of two. And Hanke is going to go to the bench for the first time today. We'll see Herbert Hill and uh, Gerald Brown check in as well. That was a nice job by Hanke to start this ball game. Off five points, active out there. Good start for the freshman. Tuka Cote also went out for Providence. Fall away, off the front of the rim. 
And out of bounds, it'll stay with the Rams. So they're getting second and third and fourth opportunities on these offensive sets. Yeah, it seems almost every time down, they're at least getting a couple of chances at the goal. And, you know, they've only got seven points so far. So one of the struggles for URI has been converting, shooting just 38% coming into this game. They need to make the most of these opportunities here today. And with Sullivan going, now Lucas coming in. John Lucky is into the game for the Rams. Ah, they, they were really worried about him, really questionable coming into this after that bad back spill that he took in the BU game, but must have loosened up with the lights on, said, let me get into this thing. Hard to sit out if you're one of the members of these two teams. Good D by the Friars. Brewington. Brown a three-point attempt, too strong, and Hazelton on the glass. It's always tough to come right into the game and hit that shot. I thought Brewington should have found him earlier. Stripped away, Gomes picks it out of the air. And Hazelton right back, but he fouled him to get it. That could be big for URI if it was Hazelton. No, wow. it is Mack that picked it up. Otherwise, that would have been number two on Hazelton. We'll see Charlie Birch come in for the first time for Providence today. And Jim Barron gives Scott Hazelton a rest. You can see him on the bench right there. And you know, again, you, you can't, if you're Rhode Island, have him even thinking about in, <laughs> being in foul trouble today. He needs to play a lot of minutes and play well for the Rams. Will Daniels, the freshman from Hyde Park, FDR High School, checks in for Rhode Island. 12-7, still early on. It's like a matchup zone now by the Rams. They're all over Gomes though when he goes inside. Gomes slips through Mack and buries it from 17. But what does he do? He steps outside and says, let me shoot the J. And Jim Barron says, hey, let's regroup here. Providence up 14-7 right now. And he's going to get his defense together. Nice start by the Friars. Look at that up fake by Ryan Gomes. He's got backcourt skills. And he's also deadly down inside where he's so tough. He's been so consistent for the Friars. I mean, that's just a great up fake. You know, I think to play and hone his game for the next level, he's saying, I got to make some of these jump shots, work on my ball handling, and those are the kind of things you'll see more of from him this year as he gets tuned up for the next level next year. And you can see his emotion coming out today, too. You know, he's, he would be the only Friar to never beat URI if they don't win today. Of all players, that would be a stunner. And Rhode Island coming out very cold offensively, at least from the field. But again, the offensive rebounds have kind of bailed them out a little bit. Yeah, it's keeping them in the game. Just two for 13 from the floor, but the out-rebounding Providence, 11 to 3 with nine offensive boards. The key, though, is they haven't been converting with those second chances. Seven-point lead for Providence. 12 and a half to go first half. Moore outside. And no good on the shot by Daniels, and the follow-up is in. Now, one, Mack. one of the things Tim Welsh undoubtedly at half at halftime is going to make an adjustment. He said, guys, we've got to block out on the defensive end. Right now, URI staying in the game with those boards. Off of Herbert Hill and out of bounds. So five-point lead for the Flyers. Took a co-team. Seems like for... Tim Wells, Coatsy is always the, the go-to guy. Of course, Gomes, you know, is going to be the go-to guy. When Welsh needs to settle things down emotionally and from a pace standpoint, Coatsy is the guy he calls him. Oh, he's steady. He's dependable, and there's no doubt that's why a lot of times Tim Welsh will turn him and say, hey, go in there and just kind of calm this thing down. I think, I think Hazelton will come back into the game shortly, too, for URI. They, will really, they really need him looking for his shots offensively. Five-point lead here for the Providence College Friars. A little more than eight minutes gone by from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. And with John Lucky into the game, this is what happened earlier in the week. Well, against Boston University, the drive to the basket, the bump in midair. You know, no one trying to hurt him there, but boy, I'll tell you, John came down hard. It looked like on his right hip without being able to brace his fall. And I'll tell you, Rhode Island's been really like the, as it says there, the, just the walking wounded this year as you look down the list. And a lot of back problems. They're going to get Dewan Robinson back practicing, hopefully by the end of next week. But wise, maybe not till next year. Tell you what, they need both of those guys badly. Robinson, you know, always in double figures, many times leading the team in scoring a year ago. They need him. They need his leadership in scoring. And wise, a versatile guy that could, you know, really swing into the lane, rebound, and score as well. 
All right, Rhode Island ball. And tipped out of bounds by Cote. There he is again. You know, one of the ingredients you really do need at this level of college basketball, you really do need from a coaching point of view to have some luck with guys staying healthy. If you lose key guys for big stretches, that is a, a tough, tough thing. You push younger kids to get into the lineup sooner than you might like to. You want to weave them in. Puts a lot of pressure on you early. You always forget about the guys that are injured but still playing. Right. Now John Lucky. Right. He's out there. This is Bitte. Right between the circles. Seen a lot of minutes as a freshman this year. They expect a lot out of him. Backing in his Mac. Up and over Cote. Tipped out of bounds. And it looked for a moment like Will Daniels had an open shot, but he got stripped away. Just lost that ball as he went up for it. Great job by Cote, but check it out with Daniels. There he is, gather it in, and you try to go up with it before you get it, and he lost that ball out of bounds. Gotta gather yourself and then go up strong. Into the game, Deshaun White will come in for the Friars for the first time, a freshman out of Philadelphia. Cardinal Doherty High School. Jim Barron and Tim Welsh, both excellent coaches working it here today, different defense. 3-2 zone now by the Rams. Winthrop in the second half against Providence really gave the Friars problems with the zone. Rams go to it early here today. It made the Friars have to live or die from the outside, and they got so cold. See, I think the guy that you maybe maybe you got to get back in for the Friars on that turnover is McGrath. McGrath, the zone buster. Also the guy at point. Providence really looked tentative that time against the zone. 11-minute mark, still five-point lead for Providence. This is John Lucky. They dump it underneath the Mac. White, though, is in his face. Shot clock under 10 for the Rams. Lucky off the glass, never hit the rim. And the Friars will take it. Good defense by the Friars that time. Really made URI take a tough shot. Nice look. Brown back out to Cote. Three ball. Great ball movement by the Friars. The penetration, the kick out. Great job all the way around. And it all started with terrific defense at the other end of the floor. Gomes got it, but the D was great. Check out the handle, huh? The dish. And then Hill with that nice kick out pass. Excuse me, Gerald Brown. Cote, and yeah, that's just nice work. Check out Brown right here. He could go up with it, but he says, no, he can feel the pressure. You set your teammates up for those kind of shots, and. And again, in the old days, you didn't see that pass out like that. But with the three-point shot, that's a valuable play. Big basket. Seemed to be checking Gomes out a little bit, his left knee on the bench. That'll, that'll definitely cause people to hold their breath in Friarland. They see that man sitting down being checked out. Uh, Gomes goes whole games without sitting on the bench. I mean, he'll play 40 minutes a night. Yeah, I mean, four out of the seven games already coming into this one. He has played the whole game. So he's very durable, very versatile. He's such an even guy. You know, you really, you very, really see him get, you know, we saw a little emotion in him early, but he's, he's really just a steady, consistent ball player. You know a guy's confident in the no-look pass when he never looks, even <laughs> after the pass. <laughs> he just turned away. That's the real no-look. That's right. Rams find themselves down 17-9 here, just about halfway through the first half. Got to get Hazleton involved in this offense. Brewington really guarding him tightly right now. Shot clock is down to five now. And off the glass, it never hit the backboard. Shot clock violation will go back towards Providence. One thing about patience, but a little too much. Rams having a very, very tough time in their half-court set. I think Jim Barron said he doesn't really want to get into an up-and-down track meet against the taller and, uh, you know, just more versatile Providence lineup so the half court set they're playing some zone right now but you've got to make shots and get good ones to play this kind of game at the offensive end and this 9 to 2 run for the Friars in the last four and a half they've made seven of the last eight shots and Brown tried to make it 8 to 9 out of bounds and it belong to the Rams fight for the ball there well, you hope with a 2-3 zone or a 3-2 is the Rams have been setting it up that you're in better rebounding position defensively. You've got people down in the paint area. Friars have been playing man-to-man -man the whole half. Brown went for the steal. 
Tipped it out of bounds, and the pass intended for Randy Brooks. Look at the field goal percentage here early on, 17%. And remember, wow. URI last year, they shot 71% from three alone. You would think Providence. with those kind of stats, Andy, that Providence would be up by about 20. I mean, URI fortunate, it's just 17 to nine right now, because they've been doing a pretty good job, Rhode Island, on the boards. Nice lean in by Montplaisir. Well, yeah, it's a six point game right now, and, and you've been shooting under 20%. So. Rody doing a good job on the defensive end and the backboards. 3-2 zone, actually with Scott Hazelton, top of the zone. He's long at 6-8, and he's got the, the reach to block father shooters. Cross pass to Cote, buries another three-pointer. He's got 10. Half the points for the Providence College Friars. For Tuka Cote, he is four for four from the field. Yeah, they've got to get Hazelton involved. I'll tell you what, Brewington denying him beautifully under the basket, number 24, doing a great job. Oh. Missed by Mack. Here come the Friars in the transition, and Hazelton catches up from behind. Back the other way comes Terrence Mack. Stripped away by White, gets it back and banks it in. No call there. Yeah, that was, that could have been called. Mack is a big, strong kid, 6'6", 240. He lowered the shoulder. I thought the second time, yeah, he definitely cleared his man out on that one. Under eight minutes to go in the first half. Seven-point lead for Providence. First one might have been a little cameo, but that second one, he was definitely knocked down. Randy Brooks on the floor to go for the steal against Brown, and it will head the other way. It'll be Rhode Island ball. When we get back, it is 20 to 13, the Providence College Friars. Seven minutes, 47 seconds to go before halftime again, a seven point lead for the home team. Providence leading by seven here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. A little less than eight minutes to go. You know, one of the big things for Providence this year, Ryan, is gonna be when Gomes is not in the scoring column as much, how much does Tuka Cote pick it up? Well, I think other guys have to step up, and Cote, one of those guys, boy, is he having a great game here this afternoon, though. He's playing very tough defense. He's been covering Scott Hazelton. He can make the three-point shots. He's solid on the backboards. But offensively, he's made a couple of threes, and he's in double figures leading the way so far for the Friars today. Yet to miss from the field. His career high is 17. He's already got 10. Mack on Cote, blocked by Cote. Oh, is he stepping up today? Yeah, he's really he's really doing a great job at both ends of the floor. And, you know, if you're watching this game, a lot of times there's, a, there's attention paid to the scorers and who's making the dazzling plays. But Cote, solid defensively on the backboards and also at the offensive end. He's doing it all. Shot clock already down to 15. No, they did reset it there. Okay. Less than seven and a half to go. Seven point lead. Here's Sullivan, now Hazelton. Around the arc they go. Back to Brooks. You can see the hesitation with URI. They're trying to just weave it up top. They need penetration. Good looks, but they turn it over again. Brooks got caught in the air. Gomes back in the game. McGrath. Around the perimeter they go. McGrath from three. No good. He hit the glass, in fact. Let's take a look now at the Hyundai Coolfax. Brewington and J.R. Moore, teammates at Worcester Academy, and of course, Gomes from Waterbury, Connecticut, and Randy Brooks as well, AAU teammates. Yeah, these guys know each other. They play in the AAU leagues together. They see each other playing in the summer, and these guys from Waterbury, we got the Waterbury connection today. <laughs> so even more sort of bragging rights when you get to, uh, get to that level of previous activity playing together. But Donnie McGrath, a guy to me that as this season goes along, the Friars need his offense. They need him to hit some of those outside shots. And that trap out on the wing by the Friars helps force a Rhode Island turnover. Nice adjustment by Tim Welsh. A lot of man-to-man -man in the first half, and then, boom, he just snaps the trap on there, and it caught the Rams by surprise. John Clark is into the game for the Rams for the first time today. He's been seeing less and less minutes. Toronto, Ontario. Stripping it away, here come the Rams, Petit. Hazelton fall away over, Gomes is all net for Scott Hazelton. 
Well, we're talking about Hazleton, just a five-point game. Seems like Providence has really outplayed URI in this first half, but to the Rams' credit, they're there, and they need more of Hazleton offensively. Gomes sets the screen from McGrath. Cotee now trying to back in. Back to McGrath. Oh, and you've been saying it. He's going to get hot at some point, but you're right. That was a confident look. And Brown was hanging all over his man there and finally gets called for the person. That was borderline intentional. Yes, I didn't think he played the ball at all on that one. You see Hazleton with that nice little step back. And at 6'8", he's got that nice soft touch. He can handle the basketball as well. They also need to just find him. I think right here, Brown with just, just kind of shoves him to the ground. That was a close one. They called that on the floor. I didn't see him going for the ball at all. But a was fouled there, and boy, Hazelton just barely by his pinky toe <laughs> saves it on this side of the half court mark. A one arm pass. I don't know what Sullivan was trying to do there. Not going to do it. You, gotta, you need a bounce pass. You can't just fling it. And it's going to belong to the Rams. See, this is where Providence has some good things going. They get the basketball back on the turnover, then they turn it over. That's where you've got to make, you know, the team that turns it over pay the price. I think a key stat is points off turnovers, and the Friars unable to capitalize last few minutes. Seven turnovers apiece for these two teams. Bate over Brewington. Cote with a rebound. And Bate hesitated, the freshman. Just take it. You're open, look for the shot. Gomes from behind the arc. Rims it around, no good. And both teams have gone cold. I think the zone's been an effective adjustment by URI. They went to it, and Providence is in a cold streak right now offensively. Hazelton from three. So that one won't go, and Randall Hankey back in pulls it down. It's a good look, though, for URI. That's, that's a good look from Hazelton. 20 to 15. Score's been locked on this mark for a little while. And for the moments and the minutes that Providence has outplayed, it really is amazing that it's only a five-point game. And Another turnover. Balance. Yeah. Now, the, the turnovers, and I think the job that URI has done on the boards has kept them in the game. And despite not shooting well, just a five-point game. The Rams just down by five. And they've really struggled shooting the ball in this first half. But, Andy, it's a low-scoring first half, and that favors the Rams in this kind of a matchup. That basket by Hazelton, the only two points we've had in the last three and a half minutes in this game. A three-pointer is rimmed in by Parfait Bate. And what happens is now Rhode Island, a lot of confidence. All of a sudden, they find themselves in a two-point game, and they start to feel like, hey, you know, we're hanging right in there in a game where they have struggled to shoot it. Nice pass to Hanke. Over Lucky. Or over Clark, I should say, and it's a four-point game. That's a big basket right there by the freshman. I'm not quite sure how he got that shot off either. Using that long-armed reach. Four-point game. There's Clark. Another three-point attempt this time. The tee is too hard. Nice look. Brewington misses the layup. Looked over his shoulder on that one. He looked behind him and lost his concentration. And Sullivan can't answer. And the Friars will take it back. Wow, has it gotten sloppy. That yeah, really has. That's now no harm done by Providence, but Brewington, you know, I think he felt the footsteps and looked back. You just got to go strong and finish that thing off. Cotino guarded by Hazelton. Brewington will launch a three. The tip won't go by Gomes. Nice job by Mack to battle with him. Under three minutes to go, first half. The day is. Traveling with the basketball before he could get clobbered. URI on a 19-9 run of their own. The three-pointer helped pull the Rams back into it. 22-18 Providence, Rhode Island hanging around quite a bit of this game, part of which is because of what is happening on the glass. Now, they've done a great job. They've got a, a plus 10 advantage on the boards. 12 offensive rebounds. Providence, just a couple of field goals in the last six minutes. And again, I think it's been the zone. The zone has bothered Providence. It's been a 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2, 3-1, 3-2
2-3 matchup kind of situation. Jim Barron put it on. Gomes can shoot it from the outside. Brewington, McGrath, Cote. They just need to find the shots, make them. But Rhodey's hung tough with the rebounding and the defense and kept his score as somewhat of a low-scoring first half. Look at the offensive rebounds. Wow. My goodness. Now, they haven't capitalized on a lot of those, but they have been getting second chances. They've been getting the ball back and taking a lot of time off the clock. Just about two and a half left in this first half. Cote makes a move. That's his first missed shot of the day. That was more of a matchup that time by URI defensively, man-to-man. -man. Been all man-to-man -man by Providence in this first half, and it's been tough for the Rams trying to get good open looks. Hazelton, nice, nice left-handed shot around Cote. Well, that's a great move with his back to the basket. He's their guy. That was a near walk. Here's a three-point attempt, and Gomes can't make it. Brown in traffic. Still can't get it to go. There's a little in the basket for the Friars. Yeah, there really is. They're having trouble making those perimeter shots right now. And for the most part, as we said in this first half, the Rams limiting Providence to just one shot. Only one offensive rebound. Maybe two on that one in the ball game for the Friars. And with a minute and a half to go, the Rams could actually take the lead with a three-pointer. So gotta give them credit. They have struggled to shoot it, but they've played the defense and blocked out. Hazelton missed on his three-point attempt, and Will Daniels follows it up to tie the ball game. Well, no doubt at halftime, Tim Walsh is gonna talk about the backboards. He's gonna look at that stat. And he's gonna talk about boxing out. That'll be, should be written in big letters on the chalkboard at halftime. Cote, here is McGrath. Looked for Gomes and contact on the far side. I think they're gonna call a block on Sullivan. That was a close call right there too. With Donnie McGrath. Check it out, Ty Sullivan. Yeah, that's a good call. He does not get there. He's like partially in front of Donnie McGrath on that one. Good call on the block. 11-2 run as we saw for the Rams. Loose on the floor, but Cote chases it back down. Less than a minute to go. Providence has had some good looks from the outside, but the player who receives the pass hesitates and doesn't take that open look. Gomes in the paint, nice pass to McGrath. Missed the reverse layup. Good look, but I'm, I'm more thinking Gomes down low. Make you move, Gomes. You know, and Ryan's so tough in there. A lot of times he ends up at the foul line. He hasn't shot any free throws in this first half. McGrath scoreless in the first half. Brewington scoreless in the first half. And McGrath looked hesitant with his shot offensively, not going up either with the jumper or with that drive with confidence right now. Under 20 seconds, Will Daniels. And Providence will get a chance for the last shot if they want to wait that long. Here's Cote, and the Friars go back in front. <laughs> well, has Cote been the guy offensively for the Friars? Nice dish that time by Brown. And the half-court shot missed, and the Friars just barely hanging on to this lead at halftime. They lost the lead for a moment. It was tied at 22, but now they go into the break with a 24-22 lead. And if you're Jim Barron, you've got to be very happy with the club hanging around a low-scoring game, which is what URI wanted. Goatee's 12, though, leads the Friars, who lead by two. Still a tight one here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Just a one-point lead for the Providence College Friars. We'll take a look at our Pontiac game-changing performance. The move by Hazelton here. Ah, it's a great move, too. He just took his, took his move to another level with that one as he got the Rams back into this one with that beautiful power move. And I thought that was a good move by Cote, but Montplaisir has come up with a couple of terrific blocks, ignited things on the offensive end. And the Rams, give them credit, Andy. They're right back in this ballgame. It's a one-point game. They've struggled shooting it, but they've played well on defense, and they've been terrific on the boards. J.R. Moore, 75%, but misses a big one, which would have tied it. He still has another chance. Yeah, the Rams come into this game shooting just 65% as a team, and free throws could be critical in this one as we get down to the later stages of the ballgame. Tied up at 33. Still a very low scoring game. 
more than five minutes into the second half. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Tim Welsh go to some pressure defense and get the Friars to score. See if they might put some full court pressure on to see if they can open this game up a bit. Cote is then cut off by Moore in the blocks. Back to Cote. Left-handed move. Gomes from three. Too strong. Even Gomes has gone cold. And it's outside uh, jump shots. Rhode Island doing a good job to keep between their man and the basket defensively. And again, limiting the Friars to just one look at the offensive end. Baum plays here with Gomes on him. See, this is the tempo right now that I think Jim Barron likes. One shot on the defensive end, get the ball, and then get a good look, but just don't turn the thing over. Work some clock. Good D by the Friars. Great anticipation from Gomes. Here's McGrath. Still scoreless today. And remains scoreless. Sullivan out of the pack with it. Got to keep looking for it. Block everything out. That's a good look by McGrath. He hit his first shot in the last game against Winthrop. And now he gets the steal and then he's fouled. McGrath hit his first shot against Winthrop. Did not score the rest of the game and he still scored us today. And that's actually a bad break for him right there. He comes up with a steal. It's almost like to me, I'd almost rather see a no call there because McGrath's going to go in and get a layup and you get that reach in situation. That's Ty Sullivan picking up his third. So he'll come out. And Randy Brooks, the senior from where else? Waterbury coming back in. Three personals for Ty Sullivan, the junior, out of New Haven. And Brooks back in, fellow Connecticut man. White Brewington without a point today. Here is McGrath. Started by Randy Brooks. Oh, he's really working to get it. They can't get it to him, though. Nice spin by Brewington to finally convert one. And a two-point lead for the Friars. That is huge because that gets Brewington on the board. He's averaging better than 16 a game. And he's a guy that can get hot. But again, the pace of this game right now can be a little frustrating if you're a scorer because this is turning into a possession game here, but there's a lot of time left to go. More than seven minutes gone here in the second half. Brooks bounces it far side to Bate. Hankey defensively going up and commits the personal. J.R. Moore for the offensive move. And that's Randall Hankey's third of the day. J.R. Moore to the line for two shots. One out of two, he's 75%. Big people have done a pretty nice job for URI today. Moore coming into the game, 6'8", he's 245. He's done a pretty good job on the boards, making some strong moves inside. Now he's from Portland, playing with a sore back, but he's a big, strong kid. Second one coming, no good. And another offensive rebound. What a tip. Scott Hazelton, if you can't control it, and you're in the paint area there during a free throw, tip it out to a teammate. Great job by the big man. It's the equivalent of a long rebound. That's just heads up. That, that's when you know what you're doing out there. Give yourself a chance, give your team a chance. You like to see a heads up play like that. Herbert Hill replaces Randall Hankey, and we'll see Terrence Mack back into the game replacing Marcel Montplazier. Offensive rebounds, URI 17 to five. It's really kept them right in this ball game today, and that's a lot of that is just grit and determination. And, and on the defensive end, it just stresses you've got to box out, block people out, want the ball more than your opponent. Gomes overplayed Mack. And it'll stay with Rhode Island. I'm not convinced that Mack didn't just toss that out at the end. Looked like he had nowhere to go and he was in the air. Might have caught a break right there. Shot clock is at seven as the Rams inbound. Brooks looking for somebody. And kicked away by Donnie McGrath. I think they're going to look for Hazelton here. Going to screen down for him. Hazelton's on the weak side right now. Let's see if they can free the big man up for a jumper. And the question of shot clock right now, if it's a down. kick, it goes back to 35, but no. So he did not kick it out, so it goes down to six. Yeah. 
Now that was just a deflection. Brooks looking for somebody, and finally Hazelton back near half court. They've got to hurry. Long three-pointer, fouled, and it goes. Wow, what a play. What a shot by Hazelton. He's pumped out there. 13 points for senior Scott Hazelton. He gives URI the lead, and there's a chance for a four-point play. Cote with the reach, a chance for the four-point play. His teammates up, they're pumped. And this is what I'm talking about with regard to confidence. The Rams feeling it right now. Friars is struggling on the offensive end, and the Rams now saying, hey, we can play with the Friars. Look at Ty Sullivan on the bench, and for Providence, block it all out, turn it around with a good possession right here. I try to get Gomes and or Brewington involved in this set. Three-point lead for the Rams. Brewington has it stripped away and was fouled by Parfait Bate. Not a bad foul by Bate. Brewington going for it without a doubt. And until you get to the bonus situation, it's just a matter of taking the ball out of bounds. Rams are in a man-to-man -man set right now. Just about to the 12-minute mark. Tried to dump it to Herbert Hill, never really had the handle. And the Rams with a three-point lead and the ball. This is the kind of turnovers that really, you know, bother you as a coach because you just want to get the ball inbounds, you know, kick it out if you have to, but don't force it in there and throw it away. And time called by Jim Barron. Didn't like what he saw. He thought things were out of sync. So he says, hey, let's take a 30 and get a good look. 38-35, URI has themselves with a three-point lead on this play. It turned into a four-point play. Three-point lead for the Rhode Island Rams. They've got the ball as well. And we think about last year's ball game between these two teams. What a different ball game with, re with regard to pacing. Well, uh, that game was more up and down. You know, Scott Hazleton, you know, in street flows a year ago. So there's a big difference right there. But people like Dustin Hellinger and Dewan Robinson, who uh, URI thinks will start practicing soon, and they celebrated in Rhode Island last year. As the last two years, the Rams have been victorious. And there's Dewan Robinson, preseason first team, Atlantic 10 selection. Terrific backcourt player out of Philadelphia. And nothing harder than having to be in the street clothes and watching games that you want to get out there and perform in. He's hoping to start practicing by the end of next week. Shot clock is at four. And Rhode Island is hot offensively. They've got a five-point lead. A little trapping pressure by Providence and people stepping up now for the Rams. They're feeling really good right now. Get the ball to Gomes. It's a zone in there by URI. And McGrath still can't connect from three. It'll stay with the Friars. Good look, though. He's, he's frustrated. He needs one to go down, but McGrath right on it with those shots. Last two have been right there. They just haven't gone down. 11.07 to go in this ball game, and the Rams have opened up their largest lead of the game on the shot from Randy Brooks. Five-point lead for the Rhodey Rams here against the Providence College Friars. 11.07 to go in the ball game here. Let's take a look now at our BMW ultimate drive of the game. Dwight Brewington, he was hoping this might get him up, but it's still his only two points of the game. That's a nice move. There's your spin move right there. That's what made that such a great drive. He knows how to break people down, but it's, again, his only goal of the game needs to look for more of that. You can see his season average better than 16 a game. And again, game like this, still a lot of time to go. Just look for it. Don't force it, and it may, it may just come your way. Trapping 2-3 right now by URI. They've done a nice job with the man-to-man. -man. Turn this into a half-court type of game, and they've rebounded well here this afternoon. Here's McGrath. Back to Brewington. Jumps it up, and too strong. Herbert Hill fighting for the rebound with Mack. It will stay with the Friars. Good example, though, of where the Rams have good rebounding position. They can't get the job done right there. 
but they've been limiting the Friars to just the one shot here today. They lead in rebounds today, 33 to 16. Remarkable difference. Burlington tries to weave through the zone. Here is Cote going baseline. Up and under move, can't get it to go. Gomes tip won't go, and it'll belong to the Rams. And again, McGrath had open looks that time. He's just hesitant to take it. And he's typically been a really a strong zone buster for the Friars. Got to look for the shot. Good shooters. Sometimes you have to shoot your way out of it. Brooks bounces it off to Moore. Hazelton has had some big points here in the second half. Around Cote, off the glass, tip won't go. Brewington will ignite the transition. And an overplay foul by Vite. Not a terrible foul. That's his second, but he cut off what could have been an easy two. Yeah, it wasn't a bad foul. That is the fifth team foul for the Rams. They don't give up an easy transition basket. But Gomes has been very quiet from the scoring column. Only eight points here with less than 10 to go in the game. The key thing is that this has turned into a half-court set because the Rams have done such a good job on the boards. And right now, this is the way they want to play it. The, you know, lowest scoring, you know, every possession counts, that kind of thing. Lock on Terrence Mack. You know, Gomes had 25 points last year against Rhode Island, but from what you're saying, it almost seems like that's impossible today because of the pace of this game. Well, the way it's going now, you see this 40 to 35 score up there. Only way this could open up more is if Providence starts to press and get some baskets going in spurts. Brewington. Off the mark on the three-point attempt. So this zone right now, it's a one-and-done situation for the Friars. They're not shooting it well. So the way the Friars have to play it now is they've got to play, you know, very good defense. And defensive rebound themselves where they struggle today and look to push it up the floor. And Hill gets a block from out of nowhere, and he's hurt, still on the floor. So a four-on-five. Hill is in pain on the floor right now as Brewington misses the running one-hander. Good defense by URI. They got back and transition didn't allow the break. That was the kind of thing I was talking about. The Flyers play the D, get out and break. But again, don't turn up an easy shot. Three-point attempt missed. Cote chases it down. And Gomes trying to go to the hoop was fouled by Brooks. Herbert Hill with the rejection. I think he stepped on a foot, though, on his way down, rolled his ankle. A strong defensive effort. That is so painful when the, when the feet, many of them are rather large feet these days. You get all <laughs> tangled up with each other. And when you're 6'9", 220, that's a lot of pressure coming down on the ankle when it rolls over. That is a painful feeling. Booms last year up near 80% free throws. This year just 63%. First points in a while for the Friars. Lots of changes for both teams. You see Sullivan back into the game for Rody. Three out of five change in the rotation here for Jim Barron's group. Randy Brooks goes out. Will Daniels into the game. Mom plays here back in the game as well. Randall Hankey comes in to replace Herbert Hill. And Gerald Brown spells Donnie McGrath for the Friars. Yeah, both coaches have gone really deep into their bench. has done a nice job to rest key players in this game. Gomes 1-2. And Hazelton outfights Brewington for the loose ball. And it's still going to belong to Rody. Hazelton been quiet the last few minutes for the Rams. It seems like when they need a big basket, they go to him. Nice adjustment right here by Providence. Full court pressure. See if they can pick the pace of this thing up by getting out full court. Nice job by the Rams to break it with a pass. Sullivan trapped in the corner, able to get the timeout call. Great trap down in the corner. They had the 5'8 man buried down there. Well, we saw the trap really only one time in the first half, and it worked to perfection for the Rams. And this time, it works again. And if you trap little Ty Sullivan in the corner, he's only 5'8", not a whole lot of room for him to go. Yeah, they guided him right into the corner. I think URI, the way they're playing this game, if they can break the pressure, they'll be content to just work the clock. You know, Providence has really struggled just scoring one point in the last four minutes and 40 seconds. So Tim Wells doing what we thought he might, which is to try to extend some pressure, 
see if he can get a couple of steals going, and if nothing else, just cause Rhode Island even to shoot the ball more quickly. So you can see when the Rams are going to that zone and the Friars aren't shooting well. I mean, one point in that last 440, but the obvious underscore there is no field goals during that time. That's a very long stretch in what has been a close and very low scoring game today. I think free throws will be critical too in the last eight minutes of this game. You've got the Rams are in the, they, they've committed seven fouls, so Providence is going to be going the line. And for the Friars, just 14 fouls. They have a couple of fouls to, to work with here. And for URI, they need to remember to continue to try to take some action to the goal. This is Sullivan. Finds himself open from 18 and misses. The tip won't go. Another follow up won't go. Boy, Will Daniels just could not find the hoop there. Good opportunities again. <laughs> Rams just have trouble capitalizing. Gomes! What an amazing <laughs> attempt that time. That's highlight time. If that one goes down with his back to the basket, he's going to shoot two anyway. Will Daniels picks up the personal. See, I think one of the best things about Gomes' offensive game is his ability to draw fouls. Here's the whistle. So, again, instinctively, what's very smart there is just should throw the ball up and make sure you get yourself the two free throws. He's put an awful lot of points up on the board over the years. His big scoring games, he'll have eight to ten free throws from the line. Charlie Burt's in now as he replaces Tuka Koti. Ten points for Gomes. Lead cut to three for Rhodey. Both teams pretty solid from the line to this point. And Gomes hits another. He's got 11 points. And Rob McKeever is going to check into the game. A freshman for his first minutes, he spells Dwight Brewington. Here comes the full court press for the Friars. Good move. It's, it's causing some problems. He's getting the ball over half court for Rhodey. Hazelton, too strong from 15, and the tip won't go by Daniels. And how about another wow. offensive rebound? And, and a fresh 35. Providence just hasn't done the job with those defensive boards. But no harm done with the pressure. They put the pressure on. And even if, and what it did is it caused Hazelton to take a quicker shot that time. Sullivan from three. No good. Hanky on the boards. McKeever. Outlets to Gomes. Around the back he goes and off the glass. <laughs> Showtime with that move. That was a great shifting move by Gomes. That also gets the partisan crowd back into it. And the Rams break the press anyway. Nice job by Rhode Island. Hazelton tries to answer back, and he will shoot two. Great pressure by Providence. Again, this is exactly what they want. The score and the press try to pick the, the tempo right up. Ryan Gomes trying to carry his teammates on his shoulders. We're tied up. Seven eleven to go in the ball game, and nothing decided yet. 40-40 time. Ryan Gomes that last time before the time. Oh, what a beautiful move. Back court style behind the back in Providence with the full court pressure. Tim Wells saying now we've got to really extend, get after it. And, and Ty Sullivan at 5'8", really trapped, but does a good job. And to Rhode Island's credit, now they're saying, hey, if we have the numbers, we're going to try to attack and then try to get the ball up to Scott Hazelton at the offensive end. And he draws the foul. So good work all the way around by both clubs. And for Providence, a quicker pace which is what they'd like right now. One thing about Rhode Island, even with the press that Providence has put on, only three turnovers in this half. Yeah, that's a pretty good job right there. Both teams now picking up the pace a little bit at the offensive end. Again, just 29% shooting for Rhode Island, but they've played good defense, and the board work has really been outstanding today. Hazelton puts his group back on top by one. Make it two. URI by a bucket, and Hazelton on his average right now, 16 points. Scott Hazelton, a local Massachusetts kid, Central Catholic High School from Somerville, Mass. University of Connecticut, 2-3 zone by the Rams. Donnie McGrath still on the bench. Here's McKeever. Gomes has it, launches a three, and off the front rim. Follows his shot, won't work, and Brown out of the pack with it. He'll try a three, and that one's too strong. And he gets it back anyway. 
Oh. Pull away from Henke. Bad angle wow. there for Randall Henke, but fast and furious. All kinds of chances for the Friars. URI, you know, looked like they had one or two of those rebounds and took it from each other. And, and this is a possession game with just six plus to go. Got to convert. You got to be good with the ball. Limit turnovers. Brooks to Hazelton. Four-point lead for Rody. Great penetration that time. You've got to stay between your man and the basket right now. Tim Welsh wants to talk it over. Jim Barron right now saying he likes the way this game's playing. He knows they're going to see full court pressure. He likes the way his team is defending and rebounding right now. Just going to stress, take good care of the ball at the offensive end. Check out this action right here. That was great penetration by Randy Brooks. We penetrate like that. You know, good things happen. See, a little bit too much on the gamble right there. Now you got three or four white jerseys converging on Brooks. Keep your head up, and you got openings, and there's Scott Hazelton. Double double today for Scott Hazelton. 18 points, 10 rebounds, each over his average. But we said at the beginning, Andy, if URI was going to win this game and pull off the upset here today, Hazelton had to have a big game. Not an average game, not a single digit game, but a big game. He had 23 earlier in the year against Manhattan. That kind of game. And he's, you know, you know you, you're really good players step up for these kind of games. They love it. And we were both thinking, too, that if URI was going to pull off the upset, it would be low scoring, and URI would use the zone to great effect. All of that has happened today. Well, that's right. The Winthrop game, the upset loss for Providence. That's what Winthrop did in the second half. And, you know, right now, people need to step up for Providence. They're in a battle. And McGrath has it stripped away from behind. And the Friars get one right back. Well, careless by both teams. And then, Too much dribbling. Yeah, Brooks tipped it away from Brewington. The starting five back on the court here for the Friars. Got to move the ball right now. It's a good example where coaches say, move the ball, don't over dribble. And, and that's what happened both times down the court. Gomes pops out for it. Coaches are always stressing the fundamentals. Good passing, good looks. Down the lane, Brewington. Off the glass. He still can't get on track today. He's a little frustrated right now. He's trying to maybe do too much right there with the one-on-one -on -one move. No one really around to offensive rebound when you go like that. Providence has a foul to give. They've got five team fouls. They could reach. If you're being beat, you better have to reach and send Rhode Island out of bounds with the ball. Hazelton gets fouled by Gomes, and he knew it. Hazelton is trying to carry his team. Gomes is trying to do the same. Both stars are trying to be stars. Well, that's what you like. You get into these kind of games, you should see Hazelton taking big shots for the Rams, and Gomes, of course, what a marquee matchup. The up fake got Gomes up in the air. And again, if he fouled him on the floor before he went into his shooting motion, it would be out of bounds. Good job by Hazelton to get the shot off and draw the true shot foul. It is just the 16th foul for the Friars. Hazelton hits it. Five point lead again. Yoraz opened it back up to a, a two possession game. Hazelton, a very highly touted high school player, went to the University of Connecticut, transferred over to URI. He's had a lot of problems with his feet over the last couple years with stress fractures, but they look fine today. He's playing well. And for Providence right now, down six. You know, they really need a basket here and to get into some pressure. See if they get Gomes involved. Biggest lead of the day for uh, Rody and a steal in the backcourt. The McGrath really struggling right now. Not only shooting it, but handling the ball. He's just going to shake it off and work hard out there. Hazelton on the sideline. Over Gomes. Way too hard, and Cote's got it. And he didn't see Brooks from behind. There's the dribbling again. Get it to your backcourt, people. Bring it up. Jim Barron right now, he's got his team in a patient half-court set. They want to work some clock. There's still a lot of time left in this game, though. Both teams have timeouts to work with as well. A couple for the Friars, one for the Rams, plus they both got 30 seconds, so... Tend to go on the shot clock. You got to be good right now. Hazelton wants a clear out. And throw it away to Hanke. Here comes Cote. And cashes it in. 
That's a huge exchange right there. Good defense by the Friars and a big basket again by Coty under control. With under four minutes to go, a four-point lead. But what do we say at the beginning? You can throw records out when you come into this game. It's been a great rivalry over the years, and we're seeing it again today. And URI looking for their third consecutive win over Providence. Lots of time left, 348. URI calling the timeout here, but 46-42, and that man Hazleton has just been huge. Now, now we're down to crunch time, 348 to go. You want the ball in the hands of guys that would be dependable. Cote avoids, you know, an offensive foul there. He's very under control. Knew exactly what he was doing. Great finish. You want Gomes to get big shots for Providence. You want Hazelton to get the looks for the Rams. And, and very important here is you want to get good looks. So you want to, the teams that win these games don't make foolish, you know, sort of turnovers. And free throws will be big as well. Tuka Koti with that last basket. Leads his troops back onto the court. Scott Hazelton, the senior. Somerville does the same for the Rams. And Randy Brooks will inbound it here for URI. Yeah, it's a great rivalry. And, and the other thing that's great here is for URI, you know, you know pre-Atlantic 10 conference games and for the Friars, before they get into the Big East battle. This, this, these are the kind of battles they'll both be in, you know, game in, game out, <laughs> starting in January. Nice trap by the Friars. They're in, a, they're in a real trapping zone right now. Great action. Down the lane, Montpellier, and he will go to the line. The thing with the trapping is, is you put the pressure on, but there's some gambling going on as well, so you've got to be aggressive with the ball, and Montpellier was. Three minutes, 28 seconds to go in this one. The URI Rams with a four-point lead here in Providence. Four-point game, URI hanging on here in Providence, 46-42. Less than three and a half to go in the ball game here. And another low-scoring affair, but it is working out in URI's favor at the moment. As Tim Welsh with Donnie McGrath on the bench here within the last three and a half, and the newcomer McKeever having to play the point. And yeah, McGrath had gone back out but was struggling with the ball, so he's back to the bench. And McKeever is out there, so it's just been a struggling day for McGrath. I think Tim Walsh saying, hey, you know, we got to go this way with Ryan Gomes, your defensive man today. Brought to you by Cooper Tire, defensive player of the game, five steals, four boards. He does it all. I mean, you know, you don't see all those kind of numbers showing up in the box score. And the other thing is, he takes a lot of the big shots for Providence. I'm sure he will be their go-to guy again down the stretch. Well, we had mentioned early on about the lack of successful free throw shooting for these teams this year, both around 60%. But both teams have shot it well today. And in a low-scoring game, that makes a huge difference. Mark Lazier looking for his ninth point and gets it. He's played well today. I mean, you've gotten pretty good balance from the Rams today. Mark Lazier has stepped up and... You know, the big guy, though, has been Hazleton. Cote to Brewington. Brewington is going to help set up the offense of the point for the Providence College Friars. 2-3 zone. The outside shot will be the biggest thing that should open up. There it is. Cote too short. Combs with an offensive rebound and blocked and fouled from behind by Hazleton. And Gomes trying to act as commander here for PC. That's that short jump shot. And a couple of times, too, it looks like the Rams are able to get the rebound, but two guys go for it. And that was a fortunate bounce right there to Ryan Gomes. It's the first five-point game. The thing about Gomes is you look at Tim Wells definitely down on one knee and you know, certainly concerned about this thing right now. But again, with Gomes, you know, get it to him and get it to him a lot down the stretch. See some pressure by Providence after the make. Four-point game. Here comes the press. Vite trying to get it that inbounds and does. Very close. You need five seconds there. This looks like an adventure right now. you got to get over midcourt by ten. And they just barely do it. Yeah, it was 26 on the shot clock. That was an adventure. Less than a second from it going off. The guards really have to play well for you right now, and it's Sullivan and 
Parfait, Bate. So you've got a lot of pressure on guys that have not been in these situations much. Sullivan over McKeever. Chases down the rebound. Mont plays here. And it is back to a six-point lead. Well, it's been loose balls and offensive rebounds. That's where Rhode Island has done it here today. In scrambling again for that one. 2.15 to go. Brewington. And a foul. Gomes converts. So we'll try to convert a three-point play. I mean, Gomes, Gomes, Gomes. He's always around the ball. And that's why he's an All-American and why he was picked as the preseason player of the year in the Big East this year. He's always around it, scrambling. He's under there. The finish and the foul. It was good defense. It's, it's close to being an offensive foul right there by Brewington, but Gomes comes up big again for the Friars. One plays here, picks up the personal. As Gomes does convert the three-point play. Three-point game, McGrath back in for the Friars. And Rob McKeever, the freshman, checks out. They're standing here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center as the press is on for the Friars, down a, by a tray. Sullivan being trapped. And stolen away by Gomes. Ahead to Brewington. Gomes puts it in, one point game. Pressure's on right now. Hazleton was open. Get him the basketball. Here comes the trapping press again, and a blocking foul called on Tuka Koti. That's the pressure that, you know, I was talking about during the second half, because this is the kind of, you know, frenzy you can create with pressure. The crowd, of course, involved, and you can get some quick hoops out of this thing, as you just saw Gold put on. Great trap. I mean, that was just no man's land for Sullivan. Mole place here is getting the ball against pressure, turning the right way up the court, but he's not throwing the ball up the court to Hazleton, who appeared to be open. You don't want to throw it backwards against pressure because the, the press never goes away at that point. Oh, good ball game here at 10 today. That was a third foul on Cote. That'll be a lane violation. That's unacceptable. If you're, you know, if you're if you're Rhode Island coach right there, Jim Barron, he might feel that. You know, there was a little bit of a push there on J.R. Moore, but you just can't allow that to happen in crunch time. Sophomore was in the lane. One point deficit for Providence, and they've got the ball. What happens here is you lean. You just can't allow to get a violation. Well, this is it. Crowd on their feet. Still a lot of time to go. McGrath. Brewing to Gomes. Skip pass to McGrath in the corner. Still can't connect the follow on go, and Cote was fouled by Montplaisir. And he will go to the line. Four fouls on Montplaisir. Check it out. Cote will be coming from the weak side, the opposite side that that ball is shot from. And he gets fouled by Montplaisir as he's going up. Good call. Montplaisir could not get back to put the body on Cote, and Cote has played a terrific game for the Friars. He's been around at, at key times all day for the Friars. It was 48-42 Rhode Island with three and a half to go, and now with one and a half to go. It's a one-point game. Providence calls the timeout. Now, good ball game here today. The Rivalry in Rhode Island between URI of the Atlantic 10 and Providence of the Big East. Providence with the better record coming in at four and three, just one and four for URI, but this game, you just put the records away and say, hey, let's tip it up and go after it. A lot of intensity. You see the free throw differential. Tuka Koti misses. And his career high is 17. He's sitting on 16 points, but more importantly, he missed a chance for the tie. And commits that one. All tied at 50 apiece. Everybody standing here at the Dunkin' Donut Center. More pressure from the Friars. And they break it with a pass. That shot will not go. Chased down by Providence. 
winding down towards a minute. Brewington to the basket. Wow, what an emphatic hoop there by Brewington. Big basket. They break the press quickly this time with under a minute to go. Three-point game, a well, two-point game right now. So again, if you're Rhode Island, plenty of time. You need to get a good look. 20 seconds on the shot clock. See if they can find Hazleton. A three-point attempt by Brooks. That will not go. He gets his own rebound in traffic. And stripped away. Who's going to get it? It's going to belong to Rhode Island. Just all-out effort there. Again, as, as Rhode Island has had their trademark, the offensive board, they got it again. And Providence really turning the heat way, way up right now. Check it out, Brewington. This is second field goal of the game, but a big one. He was one for 10 until that moment. Sullivan, ridden by McGrath. Free throws coming up, and McGrath is hot. John Cal with the call. He's, he's one of the best, not only in the Northeast and the Big East Conference where he does a lot of games in the country. Jim Barron not happy with that call, but you said it right, Andy. I think he was riding Sullivan. And it's two shots now because you've got the team fouls out there by Providence. Oh, a big miss <laughs> by Sullivan. <laughs> that thing did everything but go in, and Sullivan has been blanked today. There's still 25 seconds to go, though. A lot of time. And that will be uh, a 30 second timeout called. So, Providence is left with just one full timeout. URI has one full timeout as well. Chess match now, Andy. You know, it's like you know, Jim Barron saying, hey, Sullivan, Ty Sullivan, you go out there, make the free throw, make it a one point game. And then, if you're Providence, you know, they can work the clock right now. It's going to be free throw time. I think you put pressure on after the made free throw, and then you look to reach. You know, someone like McGrath really isn't scored in the game. He'd be a guy you might reach in on. Um, you know, Brewington, what you don't want to do is foul, foul Gomes. You don't want to send Gomes to the line. But Brewington, pretty good free throw shooter, too, at 70%. But you go for the steal, you make your free throw. And then even if you put Providence on the line it's, and they make both, it's a three-point game. you got a chance to make a three and tie the game up. Even if Cote is fouled, he only shoots about 50% this year as well. Yeah. It's going to be two shots, but the big thing is see if you can get Sullivan to knock this down. It's a big free throw. Got it. So it's a one-point game with 25 and a half left. And Gerald Brown will come back in to replace Hanky. That was big because even with the free throws now, it'll... You know, worst case, it would be a three-point game for URI as opposed to a four-point game. You don't want to foul Gomes. There's a good job by Providence to get him the ball. You want to reach, though. Brown was fouled. That was close. Brewington was open underneath. If yeah. Brown ever got rid of it, that would have been a quick basket. So Moore picks up his third personal. Tim Wells certainly breaking a sweat today. Brown is an excellent free throw shooter. A perfect 16 for 16. But he hasn't scored today, so making that first one always critical. And there's his first miss of the year. He's made his free throws, but in fairness to him, he really hasn't shot much in this game, so getting that first shot to go when you haven't been shooting, the ball's always tough. Jim Barron takes... I think that's his last time out, Andy. Yeah, and again, just to, so. to set up and also make Brown maybe think about it. So, real chess match here down the stretch. Indeed. One point lead for Providence, 52-51, 18.3 remaining. And URI is officially out of timeouts. Again, they have not beaten Providence three straight times in about half a century. So they're trying to make history today. And if they do it, Winning two of three on this floor would be something else. But again, this uh, the final of this game is a long way from being determined. A lengthy 18.3 remaining for both of these teams. Providence has one timeout remaining, and again, URI is out of them. Your, uh, Providence has two remaining in this game. Thank you, Ray Perry. 
Two yep. timeouts remaining. No matter how you look at it, it's been a, another classic matchup with these two teams. Low scoring to URI's advantage. They, they, they don't have the depth and the really the, si the, the quickness that uh, Providence has. And, you know, Gomes and Brewington, you want them in more of a half-court game. You've got a couple of key players that are out of your URI. So, again, they've done a great job. This game still has a long way to go with 18 seconds to go. So with a with a, with one shot right here for Brown, he's got a chance to make this a, a two-point game. And what Jim Barron stressed was either way, get the rebound, whether it's on a miss or a make, they've got no timeouts left, and bring the ball down the court and get a quality shot. I'm sure he sets some kind of a screening action up to try to get the ball down there to Scott Hazelton. And Providence will be in pressure to get Brown to make the free, put some pressure on, but don't foul. Tim Walsh was stressing no fouling. And Brown hits the second, but two-point lead for the Friars. The Rams with the ball. Randall Hanke back in for Gerald Brown with that big free throw. All right, he backs off the pressure. Tim Walsh says, hey, let's not risk the foul. Go man-to-man. -man. And it's all about this possession right here with 18 seconds to go. And counting. Hazelton. He's the guy. They want him with this shot. There he goes. Got it! And banks it in! What a shot by Hazelton, and we are all tied up with five seconds left. Get it to Gomes. Get a quick look if you can this time. McGrath to win it. Overtime coming up from the dunk. Good look by Donnie McGrath. He just hasn't been able to get the bounce. Thought you might try to penetrate there, but a great job by Hazelton to send it into overtime. Yeah, it's probably the way it should go. These teams have really battled it out here today. Providence, you thought, had it, but Rhode Island really hangs in there. We've got another five minutes to settle this thing, Andy. Every year on, whether it's a game like last year when it was up and down at fast pace, or the year before when it certainly felt like an upset for Rhode Island, these two teams give us thrills every year. Yeah, they do. I mean, you, you would think today that, you know, Providence would have the big advantage, but there's that big basket by Scott Hazelton. We said he had to have a very big game, and he's done it for Rhode Island. Big basket. He beat Gomes to get it. You know, you look at a Gomes, you look at a Hazelton here today. These guys are 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, they can handle the ball. They can break you down off the dribble. Great job. Jim Barron working it, still working it hard over there. Tim Welsh. Huh? Everybody getting into it. Look at, look at Hazelton's numbers. He's got a big double-double today. First basket of the overtime session, always a big one. You only play in five minutes. It can set the tempo. It can give you the momentum you need. Because remember now, the way this game's played, it's, you know, low scoring, every possession important. Get that first basket in the extra session. Hazelton with the 22 points, as we saw his career high is 23. Tied up at 53. Gomes to this point, 20 points and seven rebounds. We'll see what happens in this. We say final five minutes. Who knows if this is going to be a final five minutes. I like the move by Providence, too, with five seconds to go. They tried to go down and just see if they could put a shot up before the defense got set up. But I thought they would have been, if they could, get it to Gomes. And Gomes was on McGrath's left there. Yeah, it was a good look by McGrath. But you got to really push it, see if you can penetrate. And a lot of those game winners, a lot of times, you know, you get a clear look off of a penetrating move. Nevertheless, five more minutes to settle this thing here today. And we'll see which starting lineups these teams come back to the floor with. When Providence needed to get back into it, they were running out of time. They went back to their starting five. And then we saw people like Brown get into the mix. But it was basically the, the starting five for them to come back when they were down by six with three and a half to go. Rhode Island, on the other hand, has really mixed it up as they have all year long throughout the first now six games of the season. Randall Hanke will jump it up for Providence, and J.R. Moore will do the honors for Rhode Island. And Providence comes out of the pack with it, and stolen right back by URI. Quick hands. You, you, you can't relax for a moment. There's so many quick players, and if you want to make a steal like that, flip up and away from the offensive player, and that way you won't commit the foul. Man-to-man -man by the Friars. Love the matchup. Hazelton and Gomes. Two terrific ball players. They're both so confident going after each other also. Another bank move by Hazelton. 
Coty ahead to McGrath. Coty's been great today for the Friars. Bruin oh, oh, up and under. Two point lead for the Friars. Well, he's been held in check for much of the day, but that is Bruinton at his best. So creative and quick. Stolen right back. Gomes finds Bruinton. Back to Gomes. Wide open three. Five point lead for the Friars. I uh, mentioned getting the first basket, huge, but to get the steal and knock that down, this is a big lead right now when you're in this type of, you know, low scoring game in just a five minute ball game. Rody needs an answer. 23 points for Gomes. Blocked by Cote. Cote, what, what, what can you say about the kid? He works so hard at both ends of the floor. You know, I think you got to think seriously about giving that man a game ball if the Friars is able to get this thing done here today. He's done it at both ends of the floor. Big, big possession right now for the Rams. Still a lot of time now. However, when you're down five in such a tight possession game, you need to keep answering. Sullivan swatted by Cote again. <laughs> My goodness. Great timing. Oh man, that's a that's a swat right there. That's more than a block. That's a swat. It's like Marcus Douthit reincarnated here. I was thinking of even a Mecca Okafor from UConn. That kind of now what you like the next time is maybe he'll keep it in play. It was so emphatic, he sent it out of bounds. Three and a half to go in overtime. The day. A miss. Hazelton offensive rebound. And he was fouled. Hazelton with an, an emergency rebound there. They had to get that one. Now, right now, you know, Jim Barron looking for answers as to who else might complement Hazelton out there from a scoring point of view. And he hasn't really found that yet this year. He's like to get a guy like, obviously, DeWan Robinson back out there. But Hazelton seems to be all over the court. 23 points career high now for Scott Hazelton. He is six for six from the line. Make it six out of seven. And that went off of Cote's body. It'll belong to URI. Now the boards have been a, a major problem for the Friars here today. Sullivan to put it in play. McGrath right in his face. Hazelton slipped behind Hankey and banks it in. Two point game. A reverse three point play for the Rams. Very creative under the air. You cannot allow a Hazelton to get that open under the basket. And, and a lot of grit in this Ram team. They're right back in it again. Gomes finds himself open and can't connect. And the Rams with a chance to come right back in time. Well, you said it well. Maybe one session may not be enough today. <laughs> Here's Sullivan. That's where your conditioning, everything comes into play right now. Your mental toughness, your conditioning, everything. Will Daniels, too strong. And J.R. Moore with a rebound and then tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Rams. Well, we're just joining us. We've talked about it all day. has been the offensive rebounding of the Rams. has been sensational. And it's really been the key factor that's kept them in this ball game. In the backcourt. Arte Bate. Close to a backcourt. Almost looked like the Tay started in the front court and ended up in the back court. Daniels will launch a three. Long rebound chased down by the Rams. The Tay out of nowhere to get it and find Sullivan. Those are tough. Those are those long rebounds on the threes that can really kick out. Nice adjustment zone by Providence. We haven't really seen this today. He's really doing a good job to bottle Hazelton up. Sullivan loses his footing. It'll be a jump ball and remain with the Rams. Good hustle by McGrath. Try to do the little things. The offense hasn't been there for McGrath, but boy, he, he get down there on the hardwood quickly that time. I'd step Hazelton out right now. He's really clogged up in the middle of the zone, which has been, I think, Tim Welsh's idea to put the zone on. Two-minute mark and OT. The 21 there. He kicks out. They're trying to kick him out just to get him touches. Sullivan blocked by Brewington. My goodness. 
Well, Brewington is tall. Brewington's got long arms. He's 6'5". Ty Sullivan is 5'8". So Sullivan said, I got plenty of room to get this thing off, but not with that kind of quickness. Here comes a long one as the shot clock expires. Providence College with a two-point lead and the basketball. Providence will just hold here, but I think, I think for Rhode Island, they'll just stay in the zone. There's still a minute and a half to go. Providence will work some clock. Here's Brewington on the right wing. He'll launch a three and bury it. Huge three-pointer for Dwight Brewington. Brewington's really come up big late in regulation and in the overtime session. Perhaps the biggest baskets of the day for Providence. Hazelton swatted by Hankey. That's four big blocks in overtime for Providence. And stripped away by Hankey, the freshman coming through there. Providence now five-point lead with the basketball. Now Providence really clamped down with the defense that time. They're rejecting shots now. Hazelton got sent back. Beautiful job by the freshman. Hankey just stays within himself. Never leaves his feet. The lefty, a lot of times the left hand, and he is a lefty, blocks it. And then Brewington, he's in his rhythm. He just takes it. But a tough day offensively, and suddenly he finds himself with nine points, most of them late in the contest and in overtime. Five in overtime for Brewington. Hankey, the freshman, converts. A lot of poise right there. The freshman, he's done a nice job today. Hankey, you know, handling the ball inside. Good defense the last time. The freshman's got the bright future in front of him. This is that one. Still two possession game, under a minute to go. Well, Rhode Island needs one here. They may call a timeout if they get it to go. Ooh. No good by Hazelton. Here comes Gomes, fouled by Sullivan. Hazelton with that long, almost out of control looking three point attempt and banked it too hard. Yeah, he's trying to force it a little bit there. I mean, just trying to make something happen. The zone, a nice adjustment by Tim Welsh in the overtime. Yeah, just that, that took that took sort of the isolation or the one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Hazelton out of the game. But it, I'll tell you what, it's been a tough, tough battle here today, and Providence still needs to try to put it away. This thing won't be over till that final buzzer goes off today. Gomes is seven of eight from the free throw line, eight of nine. Remember we said at the beginning of the game when we look down, we always see the numbers for Gomes. They're there again. And, and again, he just gets it out of the flow of the game. Doesn't force it. It's a great player. Another one for Ryan Gomes. 25 points. Just about half a minute left. Sullivan. Can't connect on the three, and McGrath tries to save it. It's out of bounds. It'll belong to Rohde. Sixty-four, fifty-six. Three possession game. Missed on the three-point attempt. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Providence. Well, it belongs to Providence. Rhode Island is running out of time. They couldn't hit some of those long bombs there. URI just one of 13 from the field in overtime. Well, they struggled shooting it. You know, really, they struggled shooting it today. They just, you know, grinded it out in the backboard, played good defense, controlled the tempo. But Providence, Providence did what they had to do, which was a furious comeback at the end of regulation, put some pressure on, and came through. So at the end, you know, it's a good test, a great test for Providence. They're going to be able to pull this thing out, but a gritty, gritty effort by the Rams. Similar to the game against Niagara, their first contest of the year when they pulled out the win. In the preseason NIT, when it was very much like this, they barely squeaked it out at the end. This one will take overtime as Brewington misses. And we're going to see Jim Barron bring on some guys in the final 14 seconds. John Clark, Alex Davis is into the game, the junior out of Tucson. Terrence Mack back into the game as well. Some long faces for the Rhodey Rams, but for a team one and four, their longest losing streak under Jim Barron, I think they've got a lot of good stuff to look forward to, especially when they're 
Big guys come back. And Robinson and Wise for the A-10 season. That's exactly right. What, what your takeaway is for, for the Rams here is that they played really hard. And guys, guys really played, played well. Nice move right there by Randy Brooks. So guys get confidence, and they know if they put it together, they will win games. And they push Providence to the wire here today. Providence defeats Rhode Island for the first time in three years. Final score today, 65 to 58. And as the head coach, Tim Welsh, has to feel awfully good about this one, just the fact that he got the win. But this one really could have gone either way down the stretch. But in overtime, Providence also, I thought, looked like they had uh, a little bit more legs to it. I think so, too. I think Brewington, that big basket in the overtime session, followed up by Ryan Gomes. Gomes was there in crunch. I thought Cote played a great game. And you got to tip your cap to Hazleton and the Rams' effort in this ballgame, particularly on the boards. So Providence runs their record to 5-3 and three, as Rhode Island drops to 1-5. and five, But a couple of very tight losses. This team, I think, has a lot to look forward to in the A-10. Providence picked to go the middle of the pack in the Big East, but showing an awful lot of heart today as they beat Rhode Island 65-58. This has been a presentation of ESPN+. Plus. The worldwide leader in collegiate sports television, Ron Perry and our entire crew, I'm Andy Freed. Thanks for tuning in.